cylinder or a conducting cylinder or it'll be a line. So you could either do the line uh, and ask what's the electric field at a certain distance R or it could be a, a big thick cylinder but it could be conducting or hollow. Now, what's the electric field inside of the cylinder going to be if it's conducting or hollow? Same principle as the sphere. All the charge will go to the outside. There's no charge enclosed in the center. It's zero, you see? So, and then if you have just a line, there's no, there's no inside either. There's nothing inside, so uh, same thing. So the electric field here is uh, zero. How about the electric field outside at a certain distance r? Well, same as the line. How do we get that? Now, in order for the Gauss's law to work for a line or a cylinder, the r needs to be small compared to its size. OK? Same thing here for this. The other way to say this is, uh, the R needs to be small compared to its size. The other way to say this is that we can find the electric field towards the middle of a, a cylinder close to it, okay, using Gauss's law. So sort of like in this area. But as you get towards the end, you can't use Gauss's law to find the electric field. Now, the reason why is because the cylindrical symmetry, right, the cylindrical symmetry of the uh, line charge or the cylinder, it begins to die as you get towards the end because the electric field uh, bends, right? So the electric field here bends like that, bends like that, bends like that, bends like that. And then when you do the Gaussian surface, it's going to bend and it's not going to be a good integral to do. Okay, so uh, uh, Gauss's law can mainly be used to find the electric field near a cylinder and towards the middle, not towards the ends. Okay, so R is much, much less than R and uh, uh, close to um, middle region is sort of like your two conditions. Okay. So here's how, what we do. We draw a line. We draw a Gaussian surface. Now, why did I tr uh, choose a cylindrical Gaussian surface here to, to apply my Gauss's law? Why did I choose a cylindrical Gaussian surface versus a spherical Gaussian surface? OK? Imagine your line is like a big ruler, okay? So take a big ruler like this, and the electric, I want to find the electric field near it. I purposely chose a cylinder. Why? Because the electric field coming out of a line, okay, comes out radially in a little circle, right? And then uh, the other portion of the line comes out radially, comes out radially, comes out radially, okay? So the symmetry that it has is cylindrical symmetry, not spherical, you see? So I draw a cylindrical uh, surface. And the same thing here everywhere. And therefore, when I apply Gauss's law, the, you have integral E times uh, uh, dA is equal to Q over E0. And uh, E times dA becomes EDA again. And then the whole point is to then argue that E is a constant, right? E is constant here, 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 here. Now on the sides, What's EDA on the side?
the electric field out of the side doesn't come out because it doesn't bend, right? So the flux through the ends is 0. Flux through this end <coughs> is 0 because we're near the center of the line, right? We're in the center. The electric field just comes out. So the flux on the left and the right is 0. The only flux we have to worry about is the, the cylinder itself, right? So we, we're left with uh, E times A. Okay, and uh, now we use the, the area of a cylinder, the surface area of a cylinder. So what is the formula for the surface area of a cylinder, but don't include the area of the two ends because the flux there was zero. So I don't, I don't care about the area of the two ends, just the surface area of a cylinder. What is the formula? Yeah, the circumference times the length, right? 2 pi RL. Okay, so therefore 2 pi goes over there. Often this answer is written in terms of lambda. Q over L is the linear charge density of the rod. Tells you how much charge is, uh, is uh, inside of a certain length of the charge, right? So that's linear charge density lambda. So I could write it this way, lambda over 2 pi E0 R. Or since 1 over 4 pi E0 is uh, K, 1 over 2 pi E0 will be 2K, right? So I could rewrite it either this way or as like this, 2k lambda over r, OK? So this is telling me that the electric field near a line charge or near a cylinder towards the middle of the region of the cylinder is 1 over linearly proportional to r, not 1 over r squared. The sphere is 1 over r squared, right? But uh, uh, this one is 1 over r. Now, if this is true, let's go back to something we did in chapter 23. I'm going to show you that this answer is, I'm going to prove it that it is right using the answer that we got in chapter 23. In chapter 23, we saw for what is the electric field of a rod in the middle? Uh, let's say this is D, and this is uh, L. And what's the formula for the electric field of a rod? What answer did we get? So look at your notes for the electric field of a rod of length L, a distance D away. Remember, we took one charge here, one charge there. We canceled them. We did our integral. And we got something, if I remember right, something like uh, kq over uh, d, d squared plus l squared over 4 to the 1 half. Was that it? Wow, my memory is good. And remember, we checked to see if that was right by taking d, the limit as d goes to infinity. And we got what? kq over, as d goes to infinity, this becomes insignificant. So this was left as d squared to the 1 half. So it's just d, so it's d squared. So we, one of the ways we showed that that was correct was we took its limit as d goes to infinity. Now let's do the opposite. Let's take the limit of that as d goes to 0, 